Hey YouTube, what is good? So this week we will be retouching an image of a shoot I had a few weeks ago with Lea Karwinski. So this week we will be retouching an image shot with Lea. And on my screen you can see Capture One. The light we have used for this image was a deep octa coming from the right side of the mod. So I'm almost shooting straight into the octa bank, which has a grid on it to focus the light. So first things first, this is capture one. I use this as a raw converter. And what I'm gonna be doing is lifting up the shadows a bit. So by holding down the alt key and scrolling with the mouse, you can bring in some more slightly detail instead of just like shiveling with the slider if you hold down the alt key you can slightly scroll up and down let's bring in some more detail not too much and let's reduce the highlights a little bit so that when we enable exposure warning we don't see any reds coming up because if i brighten it there you can see all the red parts will be blown out so i'm gonna reset this by hitting this little arrow key so then this panel is reset and these settings will stay so i will be exporting these into photoshop 2021 and i will be exporting them as a psd in the color space adobe rgb resolution of 300 no resizing and i'm just gonna open it with adobe photoshop so when i hit process it will open up photoshop it takes a little bit but normally it should go pretty fast now once we are in photoshop you can see that my setup is different than the normal setup. This is because I like to use a custom made workspace so that I don't lose any time going left, right with the mouse. Now I'm not using a mouse, I'm using a pen tablet from XP Pen and I will be retouching this image on a display tablet. So that means that when I'm retouching, I'm retouching on a monitor, which takes on a pen and applies those cal those things I do on the screen. So first things first, let me reset my workspace. So window workspace. Let's take a workspace we all have, which is photography space, and then reset photography. There we go. So this should be the layout we all have. Now I'm gonna close down the libraries since we don't need them. So I'm gonna do close and on the right side you got the layers first things what we will be doing is duplicating the background layer so we can duplicate the background layer by just dragging it down to this little plus icon and then it makes a copy of the background because we always want to work non-destructive now i'm gonna zoom in by just using the scroll wheel on the mouse and i will be retouching all these little things now the tool i use for this is the let me just emphasize this is this little thing it's called the retouching brush and it you just paint over it and it calculates what should be in place for the texture you're removing now because we have chosen for this light we create this contrast so that's why it emphasizes all the little imperfections in skin even though we wouldn't see it when we face the model in real life, because we are using light that's coming from this angle, it creates depth in the skin texture. And for that reason, yeah, you get all the little imperfections visible on the image. So I'm just gonna slide, don't, don't do this, don't do like, because then it will mess it up big time. So just do a small brush by holding down the alt key right mouse on a pc you can reduce the size while retouching which is pretty quick or you can also like program your uh, keyboard because in belgium we don't have those brackets which you can always see on tutorials we have to customize them so what i've done i've customized them to the, the number eight and the number nine just a matter of putting the keyboard shortcuts in here under edit keyboard shortcuts and you can adjust those so let me quickly show you this so if we go to edit keyboard shortcuts 
and we go to not tools but like yeah we need tools you just scroll down up until the point you see those brackets popping up this and this so i click on it i put eight and nine on it i hit okay and now when i hit eight or nine you can see the the brush size getting bigger and smaller which is pretty easy so you don't always have to go right click or go up here to change the brush size so let's zoom in a little bit more let's focus a little bit more on this area and if it goes wrong we can always undo these things also don't retouch it like zoomed in like crazy like that there's no point in it since nobody will probably see them on that size unless you know it's for a billboard publication then it's a different story so this is just cleaning up skin nothing fancy about that i think normally we put on a youtube music playlist or something and we just keep on going you remove all the distractions in the image like this but this won't be able to be cleaned up with a normal healing brush we would have to change to the cloning stamp so i'm gonna be changing to the cloning stamp by hitting the shortcut s and then you can see i will be using a pretty hard brush somewhere in between and i will be reducing my size and then by just clicking alt i'm just gonna drag over and whenever the color change just slightly go over it again so resample and just keep going on so now i'm using the cloning stamp to do some fixing also here just slightly don't overdo it as well since nobody will actually be zoomed in that way so we will see the image the way it is now on the screen and that's the first step i always do so this is cleaning in the beginning when you're first learning photoshop it might be a good habit to rename the layers so that you know where you can always find the layers and the adjustments you did so that's the first step now the next step will be frequency separation i run to reduce the transitions between shadows and highlights on skin so i'm gonna hit my action which is shift f6 it doesn't work for you it's a custom made action the only thing it does is it makes a frequency separation if you just search for it on youtube you will find many tutorials but i won't be using the gaussian blur i will be using the medium blur because it respects the edges a little bit more so i'm gonna be zooming in a bit and then the radius will be an amount that blurs the texture but still keeps the edge definition on there so for this 10 would be fine and I will be using a mixer brush on the work layer low color. Now a mixer brush and with everything set to 30, 20 ish, just slightly start painting over the skin. But you can see, you can mess it up really quick. So I'm gonna undo this and I will be changing all my settings to around 20%, 20, yeah, let's do 20, 20, flow of 20, zero smoothing, there we go. So 20, 20, 20, 20, and then we just slowly start building up. Try to respect the, the edges from the transitions that are already there. That means don't start um, using this shadow and just pulling it in. Because that would look funky so i'm gonna undo a few times there we go and then you can always rotate the canvas by holding down the r key on your keyboard and then just slightly just paint in those transitions so that they even out a little bit more change the brush size don't overthink it too much in the beginning you will probably be doing that but if you just like blending textures and not textures but just blending the color now what you could do if that's easier is disable the two uh, high layers which have the texture in it and just try to like 
paint only on the low layer. Now one trick which might be cool is if you're painting near transitions try to go in circles so do this instead of like this I'm gonna enable the texture again and now on the texture layer we can uh, fix the texture with the clone stamp set to current layer which is important and make sure that you have a hard edge and the size well depends on the size you will be retouching though holding down alt and just go over the texture you want to be fixing and again don't overthink it don't over zoom too much as well just do it like this i'm also gonna do the legs so it's not just a face on an image there's more on an image than just a face so when for skin this for this image would probably be enough now you can go a little bit further and go into dodging and burning which is just making brighter parts brighter and darker parts darker but for this image i don't think it's needed because the initial image already has some nice definition in light so i'm not gonna mess around with it unless i really really want to but i'm just gonna do it like that and the next part will be coloring so for the colors it's always something personal it's not really personal it's more like you have to use specific color schemes which works pretty nice because now she's orange so i know for instance that when i use a selective color in the shadows so you got the colors split up and then you also got the whites which are the highlights the neutrals are the midtones and the blacks are the shadows so if i introduce a little bit blue and magenta in the shadows i know it works really well now every color or every tone i'm adjusting i will be renaming it and i will take a new separate adjustment layer so that i have different adjustment layers for a specific target so for instance if i want to target the whites on this image i will do a new one take the whites and just start playing around with it so emphasize the whites a little bit more and give them some greenish vibe to them greenish bluish so we got cyan magenta yellow and on the other side we got red green and blue so knowing that you can play around so i'm gonna rename this white highlights and then for the skin tone we will be doing the reds let's see do we want this redder or less red and do we want the red to be more saturated or less saturated i'll probably be going for something around there which looks nice and yeah that will probably be it now another trick you can try is create a solid color on top of everything normally i take some bluish tinting somewhere around there i double click on the color fill and then we have something that's called a blend if and in blend if you can play around with these sliders and you can see that it only affects the underlying highlights so when i change this slider to the right the highlights will be replaced with the color i've chosen here now you can see that the transitions between the color we have chosen and the natural skill co skin color doesn't work that well so by holding down the alt key on your keyboard you can see that you can like feather it out a bit and this is way too much at the moment so you can play around with the opacity of the layer somewhere around there looks cool and even if this is too much you can still lower it like 20 ish percent 10 ish 20 is cool and then when we zoom out we can have the image sink in a bit and then decide if we like the color scheme or not now i'm gonna duplicate this one again I'm gonna put it to 100% and I will be masking in I will invert this layer mask to black and I will be coloring in those with a normal brush I will be coloring in the highlights on the wall there we go and then it's just a matter of reducing it a bit so that it gives some separation between the model and the wall she's actually standing against now we got some cold colors 
we got some warm colors and those combined in an image really look nice so that's about everything so these layers are my toning yeah double n but who cares so if we just switch it on and off you can see the difference and it really depends on what vibe you want in the image but as you can see this is a pretty easy edit nothing too crazy about it and i'm already like 10 15 minutes an image which is normally the time i take to retouch an image like this the most of the time goes into the actual looking for the right colors now when you've been doing it this long you start to know what works in a certain image you also have libraries in uh, photoshop let me see if i can pop them up it's the panel i closed earlier and then we have some presets we've made which just works with a certain image if it's shot in a certain vibe like for instance if i put this one on there it works as well there's nothing specific about it i will do a later video about the libraries because this might be important to some people um, because it's an easy way to edit images and it's not with lightroom presets or anything the libraries are layers a layer stack which can be saved in a library so that you can reapply them on different images so that's about it hope you enjoyed the little tutorial i had for you this week and then i'll see you when i see you Ciao, ciao.